Chandwell's viaduct finally crosses a river. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this centerpiece scene for Chandwell. This is where I was just two short weeks ago. I had a big gap to fill with a river and I wasn't entirely sure what it was that I wanted. I built the riverbank retaining walls out of 2mm thick card, covered in scale scenes coarse rubble texture. The height of the riverbank is about right to match the space where the graffiti under the bridge has already been placed. So I introduced a gentle curve to the card before placing that on the layout. Because I intend the curves to be only viewed from the front of the layout rather than above it, they can be a little bit extreme. The reason being is once they're in place, I hope anyway, that it looks like the river is curving away into the distance. Not true forced perspective, but it's kind of a forced perspective style. If I place some of these mock-up buildings in where the real buildings are eventually going to be, we can actually have a look and see what the effect is going to be like. I think it's going to work. Once the reflections are in the water and these buildings have got lights in, it'll be a spectacular view. I am going to have to do something over here though, perhaps a bridge or something, just to act as a break. I did adjust the curves of these pieces of card right up through to the last minute. It was a lot of trial and error. So the shape I eventually settled on is this. You'll see that it curves very, very tightly into a pinch. The back curve is tighter than the front curve. It looks very odd from this angle, but as we move the camera down to the actual level of the river, I think it looks really good. It does look as though it's curving around a corner there. You can't tell that it's such an unnatural shape, and I'm really pleased with how the shape of the riverbed has worked out. I had this little cardboard cylinder from inside some dog poo bags and I thought it would make a brilliant storm drain. So going to my favourite Inkscape, I created a 7mm diameter circle, which matches the diameter of the cardboard tube, and then cutting an individual brick from a texture sheet, I then rotated it many times all around the circle. That created a nice little opening for the storm drain. It was a bit of a trial to cut out, but with a sharp scalpel I managed it. And then cutting out a 7mm hole um, out of 2mm thick card was also a bit of a challenge. But with the circle cut out and stuck on top, all of the rough edges were gone and it looked quite good on the layout. Using the same 2mm card I created a couple of little wing walls just to hold the embankment back. And then using a mixture of sand pebbles, cat litter and woodland scenic clump foliage I made it into the riverbank that we see here and I'm quite pleased with the result. At the end of my last video I was pondering putting a weir and I was going to put it somewhere like this. I wasn't quite sure what to do but I was really inspired by this photograph I took in May last year in Sheffield down on the River Don um, as part of the Five Weirs Walk. So I thought it's definitely the thing I want to do. I want to try and recreate the feel of that photograph. Um, so I made some triangular pieces of card. Um, this one was too high, um, this was a scale one and a half metres and it just doesn't look right. So thankfully my good friend Simon who lives in Sheffield volunteered to have a walk down to the uh, five weirs walk and do his best to try and work out just how big um, that weir is. Um, so we think it's about a metre. So with that in mind I created some new um, slightly different scale slivers. Um, so this one is about a metre high um, and it's about five metres long which is from Google Earth about the, the right size for that weir. So to get the curve of the weir I just basically 
cut a strip of card um, the right width and the right height and basically just wiggled it around until it seemed to have a, a good kind of feel to it. I tried quite a few different combinations with it curving one way and the other but in the end it was just a, a gut feel kind of thing um, to whichever looked best to my eye. So using some Uhu glue along the bottom of the strip which I'd cut to the correct height I just put it on somewhere where I felt was about right and held it in place as the glue set. It grips quite quickly this does the Uhu so I didn't have to hold this for very long. With that in place I then repeated for each of the triangular fillets. Because the curved card was in place first, the shape of the weir naturally emerged by keeping each triangle at right angles to the part of the curved piece that I was working on. The whole weir took on that lovely curved shape. When it came time to put the actual surface of the weir on, I was presented with this odd shape. So there wasn't much else I could do really other than to take a sheet of paper and squash it into place. Once that was squashed and folded, uh, folded right around the back edge there, um, right around the sides, and then as best I could along the points of the triangles, I just took my scalpel and started cutting it out. And what I was left with was a template of exactly the right size which I then basically drew round on the back of some cereal packet and then that gave me the surface of the weir to stick down on top of the triangles. Going back to the weir that I was using as inspiration, I really liked the fact that at this low water level, part of the weir itself was exposed. The scale scene's texture is perfect here, it's that old shabby kind of brick, so I thought I'd leave part of it dry. Once it was painted and I left a bit of it exposed and weathered a little bit with inks, it looks really good. I really like this part of the weir and it was really simple to achieve. I used the same squashed paper technique as I used on the weir to get the shape for the surface of the deeper part of the river, the part of the river upstream of the weir. So taking a template in paper, it was simply a case of putting that onto card. I created a series of ribs, um, only every seven or eight millimetres apart, um, onto which to paste the surface of the river. I needed this to be dead flat, dead smooth, so it would have that slow water reflective look that I was looking for. And I also wanted to make sure that the card didn't warp when I started adding the paint and the varnish. So I used a lot of ribs and I used a lot of glue to glue it all down. Here I'm adding Uhu glue to each of the ribs. It's a bit of a challenge under the bridge and in truth I couldn't actually get to them all so I put lots of glue on the underside of the card as well as I was sitting it down. But it stuck down really nicely and it produced a lovely smooth hard solid surface. There were a few gaps where my template didn't quite work. Um, on this side I used sand and dilute PVA to fill in the holes and everywhere else I just pushed in some decorator's cork which I had left over in the garage and I just used a cotton bud and slowly put it in and made sure that it was dead level with the card. But in the end I've got a nice flat surface onto which to paint the river. I had this lovely brown paint in a tester pot um, that we got for some decorating that never happened uh, maybe four years ago. Um, it, thankfully it was still um, liquid um, so it was absolutely perfect to put down a sludgy brown colour. I used a small brush first just to go around the edges. Obviously the edges of the riverbank are made from printed scale scenes texture. Um, at this point it had my customary four layers of varnish on um, but at the same time I wanted to make sure I got absolutely no paint on that texture and um, so this small brush um, I went round the edges very very carefully before the much more enjoyable job of using the bigger brush to fill in all the gaps. The 
shallower bit of the river was a completely different technique to the deeper bit. The deep bit with its slow moving deep water needed to be smooth, whereas the shallow bit where the water runs over pebbles and rocks needed to be a little bit different. The technique I was using is a very simple one which involves toilet paper and very dilute PVA glue. This glue is basic normal PVA diluted with 50% water, so 50-50, and then with a little bit of brown ink added. Um, the ink was, was pointless adding it really because it got painted over in the end, but um, that's why it looks a little bit brown. So basically you just put the sheet of toilet paper straight onto the baseboard and then just very gently start adding glue with a brush. The toilet paper, when it takes the water and the glue, it crinkles up and those crinkles are exactly what make the ripples in the water. Now make sure that you brush in the direction that the water will be travelling. That way the wrinkles are the right shape. And it's a brilliant way of introducing the impression of movement into the water once this gets painted. I put lines coming down from the weir like this just with the tip of the brush and what that introduced was um, ripples running vertically down from the, from the weir and that was the beginning of what would eventually become the white water part. It looks after itself this technique. So let's fast forward a little bit here. At this point I noticed a bit of a bubble had formed so I tried to burst it with the brush and in doing so and adding more glue I ended up splitting the toilet paper um, and it made a quite an unnatural blemish on the surface of the water. I wasn't sure what to do, I thought I could leave it and maybe put another sheet on later but in the end I ended up opening the hole even more with the brush making a kind of a, a circle ripple and then just dropping a little tiny stone into it. Um, that represents um, a, a large rock um, on the real thing once it's finished um, but the way that the ripple is going around the stone um, I think it suits it quite nicely um, and in the end I did another one as well um, on purpose just to match it and I think that's worked out all right so I escaped that mistake. So over the course of the next half hour or so I just kept adding smaller and smaller strips of toilet paper until the whole of the riverbed was covered. Um, it's important to blend out the lines, the straight lines of the toilet paper just by teasing it out with the brush and extra glue and we don't want um, lines showing on the face of the water. That's easy to do though, the toilet paper is soft. I only added one layer because I wanted the ripples to be quite small. I think if I was doing a C or something like that I'd use three or four layers of toilet paper built up over time just to exaggerate the waves. But you can see here that it's very small, I think they're perfect for end scale and I'm really pleased with how it's worked. This doesn't need much extra doing to it. Like I said I was careful to um, keep the ripples going in the direction that the water is going and I made them a little bit bigger under the bridge and what I wanted to represent there was the water getting a little bit faster um, and going over some bigger rocks maybe um, and I think that's worked out okay. So on the whole, very easy technique and once it's painted it'll look really good. So I left it to dry for a good couple of days so it went really hard um, and then I continued the painting. I just used the same brown as I did for the upper part of the river um, obviously being careful to go around the rocks. I did the other scenic elements really simply. With a picture of the actual weir in Sheffield on my iPad in front of me, I tried to reproduce what I could see. And this involved overgrown riverbanks on either side, even though there's a lot of industrial things around, for which I used large stones. And there's also piles of pebbles, little pebble islands um, in the middle of the river, which is very shallow on the day that I took the picture. So it's using glue, stones, cat litter, flock and sand. I just potted around a little bit, trying to get a shape that looked pleasing to my eye. I carried on for ages. I found that the cat litter was the best, really really tiny stones and it absorbed the glue really nicely. Once it had dried, all it needed doing was painting. I used the pictures of the river in Sheffield 
and various shades of browns, creams and greys to get the little stone islands looking like how I could see. Like I said, I was really inspired by the five weirs path in Sheffield along the River Don. So I wanted to have a path running along the side of my river as well, just the same as it does in the Don. So I used the Skill Scenes cobblestones texture um, and had it all the way around to the end of the river like this. I also made the path narrower as it went into the distance, just another attempt at the forced perspective. So it wasn't until I had fitted the path, letting the glue dry, that I remembered about the point rod. So this is piano wire, um, and unfortunately it goes straight down through the path. I was going to cut a little hole um, to let it go through, but I'd already stuck it down, so I kind of tried to force the piano wire through the path, and because the glue hadn't dried, it caused the whole thing to cave in and made an absolute mess. So at this point I thought, oh no, what am I gonna do? I could take the path up, print it all off and start again. Or, if you've ever walked along the towpath of the Leeds and Liverpool Canal near Shipley in West Yorkshire, you'll see there's loads of places where the path support, the retaining wall, has fallen down into the canal. So I thought I'd model that. So I put a couple of rocks in the water next to the path and kind of caved it in a bit more and painted it all an earthy kind of rocky shade. It seems to look all right. So what we've got is the hole where the point piano wire will eventually go through is actually a caved in bit of the retaining wall. Another mistake saved. I had some leftover fence from when I did the iron bridge. Um, this is N-gauge fence from N-brass locos. So it's etched brass, it's very, very fine. Um, I just brush painted it um, with some primer and then some black paint. I wanted a bit of fence just to stop people dropping off the high piece of the path when the weir descends. That's a, that's a drop of a couple of meters there. So, you know, the Chandwell authorities decided that it's best to have a bit of a fence there. I used my pin vise to drill holes and I used a bit of super glue just to drop in those holes to secure the fence. Once the fence is in place, it really does have a feel of the five weirs down on the River Don in Sheffield. About a mile away from here on the River Wharf, there's a weir, and more often than not, it has a massive fallen tree trunk stuck on it. And I think that would be a brilliant thing to try and model on Chandwell. So I've come out here to try and find a suitable twig. I tried a few twigs, and this one works really nicely, the way that it curves over the top of the weir like that. I've left some of the brickwork showing through. My intention is to make it look like the water is flowing around the tip of the tree. I filed one end of it down to a point so that when it's placed on the baseboard it looks like it's coming out of the water rather than sitting on top of it. Something a little bit like this. I also cut the end off another suitable twig and put it just beside it. My intention here was to make it look like it was the same log lying in the water with the water going over a little piece of it. From this angle down here it works nicely and once I've painted the end of it to make it the same shade as the rest of the log, I think that the tree trunk will look complete. The way the water runs around the tip of it does actually work. I'm quite surprised and relieved because I didn't want to have to do the whole weir again. Just adds that little bit of extra realism to the weir scene. Rivers aren't blue, they're not clear either. Whenever you stand beside a river like this one that has inspired me, you don't see the bottom of the river, you just see a kind of a reflective dark brown kind of colour, maybe with some green in it. 
Because I was using varnish on top of my river, I decided not to use resin or anything like that. What I'm doing is I'm actually painting the surface of the river, not the bottom. So with that in mind, and with the colour of the river in front of me on my iPad, I started applying paint. I used all kinds of different paints that I had in the drawer. Some were from Tamiya, some were from Citadel, and I think some were Humbrol as well. I just basically started mixing on the surface of the river itself. It went from too green to too black, to too bright to too dark. But I just kept going. I added inks and I added paints. I just kept mixing with the brush until it started to look right. I kept it darker where the water would be deeper and I tried to work from the outside in. Eventually, after about half an hour of slopping paint on, I eventually got to something that I thought looked right. I thought it would probably get darker when I added the varnish, so I kept it slightly lighter than I would have otherwise had. So there we are. I was finished and I basically just hoped for the best. As the shallow water ripples and cascades over the weir, it does turn white. It's not white water rapids, but it's white nonetheless, so I wanted to pay special attention to getting this part of the weir correct. Here I'm using Hobbycraft Tacky PVA, which is slightly thicker than normal PVA, in a fine tip applicator. All I'm doing is drawing very, very thin lines of PVA directly onto the surface of the weir. They don't have to be accurate, they just have to be thin and parallel and in the direction that the water would be travelling. I paid special attention to the process around the edge of where the fallen tree would go. I made it quite a bit thicker around there, making sure I kept the blank spot above the weir showing through. I brought the lines down onto the surface of the river and took them in the opposite direction from the weir as well. Once this was done, and before the glue was dry, I took some very, very dry sand and sprinkled it all over the glue. This was partly to give some texture to the white water, something for the paint to stick to when I came to paint it. Once the sand was sprinkled, I simply blew it away. And what I was left with was very, very unnatural looking texture on the weir. At this point, I was a little bit worried, but I was using my imagination and hoping for the best. I cleaned up some glue that slopped into the gap where the tip of the fallen tree would go. It was quite blobby around the bottom of the weir where it joins the surface of the shallower river, so I just used my fingers just to smart and smooth that out a little bit. I did notice from the photograph though that the water does bubble up and it almost goes over the top of itself as it runs down and hits the surface of the water below. So I was trying to aim for that rough shape using just PVA glue. I added sand again, just to finish it off. So here's a close up as the glue is drying. You'll see that it's blobbed and the lines haven't stayed exactly the shape that I made them, but that's okay. We're just aiming for an impression here, an impression of movement. There's the bit around the tree trunk. It hopefully shows that the water is bubbling and frothing around that bit as the trunk lies in the water. You'll see also that I've taken the sand onto the surface of the water as well, underneath. Once the river itself was painted, I had to now make the white water white. And for that, I started off with a light grey paint, so not white, light grey, and I use a dry brushing technique. This is where you put the paint on the brush and then wipe most of it off. I'm using a brand of paint that I bought at a Doncaster Model Railway exhibition. I can't remember what it is, but it's a really thick paint and it's fantastic for this job. I just very, very, very lightly brushed my brush with the paint on it over the rough sand that I'd added earlier. What that does is it sticks to the exposed bits of sand and leaves the darker colour showing in the recesses. And as I was going, I was getting happier and happier with it because it did start to look like bubbles on a surface of some white water. I started brushing onto the surface of the river as well, it really started to look good. I used some white paint next on the thick blobby bits that I ran that I put along the bottom of the weir. And already there's no varnish in place, but it does look 
like water moving over a weir. I repeated the process on, on the ripples. I overdid it at this point. I ended up undoing some of this because I thought I'd gone too far. But that's the beauty of this. You can just paint and repaint until you get it right. And that was how I did the white water. Simply dry brushing some white paint over the top of some sand in some PVA. With the river painted, it was time to start applying the varnish. I decided to use some Ron Seal interior acrylic gloss varnish simply because I had a tin in the drawer. I went round the edges very carefully with the small brush like I did with the paint and then I added the varnish with the larger brush. I didn't put it on too thick, I didn't want to risk it going milky, I'd rather do multiple layers rather than one thick layer, but I just gently brushed it on and as the varnish went on and you could see the river starting to go glossy I knew that I was onto a winner. The varnish that I was using it's quite thin um, which is really nice because it flows nicely, it levels very nicely, you don't need to risk getting bumpy water. One thing you do have a, a risk of though, with any varnish I think, is that the surface tension at the edges causes the liquid to rise up into a meniscus. So I was lucky though, because the varnish was so liquid, I could simply remove it with the fine brush. So at the end of every layer of varnish that I added on, I went around all of the edges, just soaking up the excess at the edges, just to make sure that the varnish was absolutely flat and didn't rise up into the meniscus along the edge, because I really think that can ruin a model. I had to do this especially carefully around the tree trunk and around the two rocks representing the caved in path. If you remember, my main thing that I mentioned in the last video was I wanted to be able to see a reflection of my iron arch bridge. And I think you can see here that I've achieved that. Anyway, back to the varnishing. The first coat was finished. Now I needed to put the second on and so on. So let's get this river finished. <laughs> 